All right, we've been talking about galvanic cells, and now we're going to talk about some potentiometry, how to use electro, how to use this electrochemistry business to our advantage. So, first we're going to talk about some different kinds of electrodes. There's reference electrodes, which like the whole idea is to maintain a fixed potential that you can use an indicator uh, that you can measure an indicator electrode against. Um, and an indicator electrode is something that's designed to respond to the change in concentrate or in analyte concentration in solution. So, so here's an example. We're going to measure the relative amounts of iron two and iron three in solution. And so you would have you have some you're going to measure it against an AG, AGCl electrode. So you can do the math, and if you work out the math, so you have E positive minus E minus uh, using the Nernst equation. And what you end up with is that actually everything is constant except for the concentration of iron 2 and iron 3 in solution. So you can actually measure the difference, the different concentrations of, of uh, iron 2 and iron 3 in solution based on the potential that you measure. Right, so there's a couple different kinds of really common uh, reference electrodes. And I know we talked about the standard hydrogen electrode as being sort of the gold standard. Well, as it turns out, it's actually pretty hard. Like you can't just like drag a she out to the field and uh, stick it in some lake water or something. So we uh, generally use uh, something like an AG, AGCL, or uh, SCE um, for a standard calomel electrode as a reference electrode when we're making uh, measurements um, at the bench top. And since we know what you know what the ref what the uh, potential for this is relative to the standard hydrogen electrode, we g get away with that pretty well. So here is um, an AG AGCl electrode where you have um, AGCl solid uh, giving an electron up to form uh, silver metal um, plus chloride uh, plus chloride. So um, and when you, so the E zero is 0.222 volts. But if you uh, calculate it for a standard for, for a saturated KCl potent, or KCl solution, which is what you, the conditions that you're most likely to have inside of a in a in a reference electrode, then you actually have a different potential. Um, this is all for 25 degrees C. So basically, how it works is you have a silver wire coming in with some AgCl paste um, hanging out in the loop in the loop of the silver wire. And that's in contact with the solution that's saturated with KCl and AgCl. So here's the solid AgCl and KCl down here, and then you have a porous plug going to your solution. Um, let's see, so, so like a salt bridge. That's like a salt bridge. bridge. So let's go over the, the SCE. Um, so here you have this uh, mercury chloride in donating an electron to create mercury liquid and chloride minus. So same thing where you have a measured um, E0 potential, but when you have a when you have a, a saturated a solution saturated with KCl, you actually have a little bit different potential. So here's how it works. Basically the same thing where you have a <coughs> pardon me, KCl at the bottom with a porous plug um, with a solution that's saturated with respect to KCl over the top. Um, so you have basically your saturated Cl minus conditions. Um, and then here you have another porous plug. This goes to a to a solid uh, mercury mercury chloride KCl um, that's in that's uh, in contact with the mercury liquid um, with a platinum electrode coming out of it. So this is a good reference. Uh, this, this is a another uh, reference electrode. So let's talk a little bit more. So now you've just sort of seen the diagrams. Now we're gonna. Um, use them a little bit. So here, um, let's let's talk about how we can measure the concentration of like like the Fe2 plus Fe3 plus in solution, or just the concentration of total, um, say Ag plus silver plus silver um, cation in solution. So here, some metals can indicate themselves. So we've talked about silver. Silver can can indicate itself. Um, copper, zinc, cadmium, and mercury. So Everything else needs uh, to use an inert electrode, uh, so something like platinum, gold, or carbon. So that, that's just something to sort of know. Um, so that's why we talked about why, um, 
why you have a platinum uh, electrode even when you're trying to detect something else. So it's an inert electrode that only contributes by being a con like sort of being somewhere where electrons can get dumped off or be um, collected um, by these metal cations that you're trying to detect. So here is the SCE, so the standard calomel electrode, just like we talked about on the last slide, only it's just a little box here. And so that's your reference, that's your reference uh, electrode. You have an AG wire, so it's in contact, or it's in, it's in this AG plus solution, and you can measure a potential and actually quantify the amount of silver in solution that way. All right, so the last thing I wanted to talk a, a little bit about is a junction potential. So this is a potential difference that, uh, that is generated when you have two, for, for example, when you have two electrolytes in contact, um, so something like a salt bridge where you have uh, electrolyte in co two electrolytes in contact. So across the, each side of the salt bridge you can have one of these junction potentials. And this is what actually fundamentally limits the accuracy of potentia potentiometric measurements. Um, and because E observed, so what you measure on your, on your meter um, is equal to the E of the cell, which we um, think we know, <laughs> uh, which is what we've been, you know, what, that's what we've been calculating, plus the junction potential. And you can't often measure the junction potential, so you don't really know what it is, and that's why it's fundamentally limiting the accuracy. So basically what's going on is that at time zero you have, you know, one electrolyte on one side, the other electrolyte on the other, um, and then time go, you know, sometime after zero, you have sort of where your Na is going across the, across the boundary, but your Cl goes way faster across the boundary, and so then you develop a potential difference, a, char a charge gradient, which is the same thing as a potential, a potential difference. So this develops because fundamentally the chloride um, ions are moving faster than the sodium ions in solution. So that's, that's going to come into play a little bit later on. All right.